Good morning, everybody. I'm Paul Christmas. Here's your next generation update. Leading up to Kids Church this week, I was reading the story of Moses. And man, what an amazing story. You know, it's so easy to remember the beginning part of Moses' life all the way up to the deliverance of the uh, Hebrews. And we all remember all that stuff. It's, it's what the movies are made out of. Prince of Egypt, Ten Commandments. What an amazing story. The plagues come, Pharaoh and Moses, this political turmoil. It is just a fascinating story. Moses' exile and his return after speaking to God in the burning bush. We love this story and for good reason. It's one of the greatest stories ever told. But what we tend to not look at as much is what happens after they cross that Red Sea. You know, we remember the Ten Commandments and that's all great. But as I was reading Moses' backside of his life, uh, well, I should say his final 40 years, it just struck me how incredible this man's life was. And I wanted to share that with the kids. You know, Moses was the first person that is literally called a friend of God. It says Moses spoke to God face to face. He was the most humble man who ever lived. Now, that was written in the Old Testament. I'm sure it's been beaten since, especially because Jesus says that uh, John the Baptist is the greatest of the prophets from the Old Testament, Old Covenant but that the least of these in the kingdom is greater than John. That means you, me, whoever said yes to Jesus is actually in God's eyes greater than Moses. Now that can be mind blowing because Moses was such an incredible figure with such an incredible story. But we can go it that way. We can look at it and say, there's no way. Or we could take Jesus at his word, which trust me, that's a good idea. And we could say, if Moses did this, what can I do? What can you do? What can my family, my, my church family, what can we do together? And the truth is we can do the impossible, just like Moses did. And so that was basically my whole lesson. But other than that, I wanted to just tell these stories because you can't read the stories of Moses and not be inspired. It's just impossible. He takes these Hebrews out into the wilderness and guess what? They did not have to travel that far. But because of their own fear, their own doubt of God, they made a horrible, horrible decisions. The first terrible decision they made was not to accept the covenant God wanted to extend to them on Mount Sinai, which led to the law. You know, God said, I desire a nation of priests. And he invited them all up and they were like, no, we're good. Go ahead, Moses, you talk to him. So that's where the law comes in because religion was the substitute for a relationship with God that he'd extended to them. So you can blame the Hebrews for the law. It was never God's first plan. Anyways, that's a really bad decision. The next bad decision, they get up to the promised land, send the spies in. The 12 spies come back. 10 of them are like, it's scary in there. There's giants. We're like grasshoppers to them. And then only two, Caleb and Joshua say, yeah, but it doesn't matter. God's on our side. We can take this. The land is ours. And of course, the Hebrews, the slave mentality Hebrews choose fear and they just don't trust God yet, which is crazy. You'd think if, you know, you saw the Red Sea part, you'd trust him. But how many of us have had amazing miracles in our life and still choose not to trust God day to day? Don't answer that. <laughs> That's a convicting question to myself. The truth is though, they made another bad decision. God said, because you've made this decision, you're gonna spend 40 years in the wilderness. This generation shall not enter. So basically all those people, all those adults who made that decision had to die off so their children could take it. So in those 40 years, we get a whole lot of amazing stories. And Moses, friend of God, is the leader. And man, what does he have to go through? He has to go through these complaining people. And he has to tell God, please don't destroy these people. You brought them out. God gets so frustrated with them. He, Moses was just such a good man. He had such a heart. And, and, and these the crazy miracles still followed him. He strikes a rock, water comes out. There's a story I love of the fight against the Midianites where Moses has to keep his arms raised. And as his arms are raised, the people win. But when he puts them down, the Midianites start winning. So he has Aaron and, and Joshua hold up his arms. It, it's just incredible the stories this man went through. Despite having moments of doubt, God still used him incredibly. He, but it was God's timing that did it. 
And all Moses had to choose that whole time was to be a friend of God. And if we do that, if we choose to be a friend of God, God will bring amazing things to us. He will make sure our lives, our purpose is fulfilled. And that's really all he's asking for is trust. Will you trust him like Moses did? I love sharing these stories with your kids. I, I love Bible stories that just light me on fire. And I hope they do the same for you. I gotta say, I'm so thankful I live today on this side of the cross, where each one of us gets the opportunity to live a life even greater than Moses. Hard to believe, but it's true. So believe in yourself because God does believe in you. God bless.